Hello, I'm Ed Raby, otherwise known as the Rabid Atheist, a former pastor turned atheist, now a compassionate anti-atheist. Welcome to my channel. Feel free to like or dislike the video as you see fit, so feel free to hit those buttons. Feel free to comment below, and I would appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel and hit your notification bell for more content as it is released. You're also free to share my videos as much as you like. The purpose of this channel is... Uh, is educational in regards to atheist and deconversion issues and various other issues in relationship to those issues. I also want to give a shout out to the Rabid Nation and those that want to be part of the Rabid Nation. Um, today's a little bit different video. It is a deconversion kind of video, but because it's Father's Day and I'm releasing this on Father's Day 2021, um, it's a little bit different because this is more my personal struggles with coming to terms with both the death of my father and his memory and what to do now uh, that I'm an atheist in regards to my father. And, you know, I suppose a little bit of a background on him is a little bit in order. Um, as much as I can gather uh, about my dad, uh, he was born in 1943. He was the oldest of three siblings uh, with that woman. Uh, that my grandfather had children with, which my grandfather, my biological grandfather is a complete other story. Um, every time I go to Ancestry.com and trace his lineage, I'm finding myself related to another first and second cousin through him uh, and not through my biological grandmother. So um, <laughs> there just seems to be a lot of them. And, um, but my father found himself um, on the street because my grand, my biological grandfather had left my biological grandmother and he found himself with his mother on the street and to kind of allow her to go look for work and find some way to support her kids, she put them in an orphanage. And, um, you know, circumstances being what they were, he was adopted out. Uh, to the people I would know as my grandpa and grandma Raby and uh, along with a couple other boys and uh, you know at a ripe old age of five and um, he lived there pretty much the rest of his life working on the farm uh, doing the things that he did uh, he built up a strength that is still present in, in myself and in my oldest child uh, that continues to wow people, a natural power, but also a keen mind. Um, my father had dyslexia, and so it wasn't, of course, diagnosed in the 1950s when he lived. Uh, he graduated in 1962, and so he, that was never diagnosed and never dealt with, so he struggled with reading and composition and things like that, but he did really well in math and anything he could put his hands on. And so it wasn't too much of a sh stretch for him to um, to eventually be what he was, which was a machinist. Um, he liked working with his hands and he liked grinding out parts and making things and sharpening things. And that's how he made his living in the factories for a long time. And then later he would open his own business along those lines too. Um, you know, um, he was also a veteran. He joined the Navy and he was in the, uh, Navy in Florida during the Cuban Missile Crisis. And don't worry, he wasn't really in too much danger other than, uh, he was driving admirals around in, in, in their limousines because that's what he was, a Navy driver. And of course that just meant that he had to have a pristine uniform that was clean all the time. Um, after that was all over, it took him a while to meet my mother. My mother and him were married for a little while before I came along. And uh, from all I can gather, because I was an only child, uh, my father poured every bit of love that he had into me. Now, my father, when he met my mother, wasn't really a Christian. And uh, he was just a whatever, I guess. But later on, he embraced Christianity. and. It's my mother and his embracing of Christianity and in the end of the Sons of God Pentecostal Church, that's that's where I ended up growing up myself. And um, I don't know, people ask me what I feel about that as a deconverted person who's now an atheist and 
I don't think the goodness of my father was any way affected by his religion, really, one way or another. And so I want everybody to understand that I look at my dad through atheist eyes now, and I see a man who is just being a good father and a good husband and doing the best he could with what world that he had. And so it was largely due to him that I grew up in the church. Um, and, you know, there were several incidents where my dad could have gotten really angry at me, uh, but he didn't. Uh, that was just not his style. He would sometimes get very, very angry at objects, which is something that I still maintain. You know, I don't get mad at people or pets. I tend to get mad at objects. Um, my father was legendary for one particular action. His hugs were the best in the universe, as attested to by everybody that he gave one to. I sometimes feel that hug and that level of hug when I hug my oldest son. He has that same power when he hugs people, and it's a good one. Um, you know, he had a love being on the farm, he had learned to love animals, and I don't remember growing up where we didn't have a dog, a cat, some chickens, or some rabbits running around, and our house, our property wasn't really designed for all that, but they were always there, and they became just part of the scenery. And, uh, you know, I think my middle child has kind of inherited that love of, my dad loved dogs, and I think that's gone into my middle son, my middle child. And then he had a natural compassion for anything. He would, he wanted things to be simple and he wanted things to be straightforward and he reached out in compassion and cared about a lot of people. Um, it was no accident that at his funeral, the place was packed. Um, that was the kind of connections that he had with people and the kind of impact he had on people's lives. And um, man, uh, I couldn't have asked for a better father. And um, did he make his mistakes? Sure. Did he tell me everything I needed to know? No. It was more of his character. Now, he would have probably argued as a theist that a lot of his character got changed by his relationship with God. I personally think now he had a crisis moment in his life where he realized that the cigarettes and the alcohol were eventually going to diminish his relationship with his wife and his child. And I think religion kind of gave him the structure for which to make that change. I don't think he would have made that change whether religion was around or not. And I would probably speak to him in that regard at, that way if he was still alive today. Uh, but he died in 1994. I was still in seminary. And the impact of dad on my theism and why I held on to it so long, I want everybody to understand that I'm not blaming my father, I'm blaming my religion for this. Because my religion held me to the belief that if I wanted to see my father again, I had to keep the faith. Now, you need to understand that by this time in seminary, I've already posed a few questions that will rattle around in my head for the next 20 years about whether God was even real <clears throat> or whether anything in the Bible could be verified. I had been exposed to a lot of the facts about the Bible, and even in the 1990s, we knew a lot of stuff. Uh, even before the internet was really kicking off, things were starting to unravel with certain books that were being written, particularly about Moses. The question of whether Moses was really a real person was kicking around at that time, and I learned about that in cemetery, uh, seminary, cemetery, whatever you want to call it. Um, and so I had a lot of questions as to whether my faith was real in the beginning, but this emotional experience of losing my father and being in a vulnerable state and somebody sitting there saying, hey, you want to stay faithful to the faith, do what you set out to do. And, you know, that way you'll see your dad again in heaven. And looking back at it, I really wish I hadn't taken that course. I really wish I had said, you know, regardless of whether my dad served or whether I might see him again or not, <clears throat> I really should have sat down and said, yeah, but these questions are really pivotal and I need to answer them. Now, I don't know what I was going to do if I had answered them and became an atheist back then because I would have had to immediately 
finish my education and say, yeah, I've got these degrees, but they're basically useless now. But at the same time, you know, I notice a lot of stuff that I wasted because of an emotional experience that reinforced my faith falsely. And this is something that I struggle with every Father's Day because I really, really miss my dad. I miss my dad to this day. It's been 26 years since his death, and I still miss him because he was just a good man. And um, a few years ago when I realized I was an atheist and I couldn't believe anything, and we usually make an annual pilgrimage sometime, pilgrimage sometime into the summer to go visit his grave, usually with the demon mom. And um, a few years ago, I knelt down before his gravestone and I kind of touched it. And I had one of those moments because I realized that none of it was true. And I was never going to see my father again. And I cried. And for the first time, I had relief in my grief, if anybody understands what I'm talking about. Up until all the time, I would grieve over my father, and there was always this longing that never seemed to die. There was always a lack of closure about it, because I always felt it was so fucking unfair of God to take away my father when I was 26 years old and rob my children and my grandchildren, which would be his you know, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, of his life, of his presence. And it just angers me that God would do that. It's one of the things that I began to struggle with it. And actually my father's death now really is a strengthening moment for me, for my atheism more than anything else. Because I can't fathom a God who has all the time in the world but will pluck people out of this world away from all the people that love and care for them at ridiculous times. Now I realize that my father, he was a genetic time bomb going, waiting to go off. Um, he had a lot of problems that he exasperated when in his early days by smoking and drinking a little bit and getting out of shape and things like that. And yeah, sooner or later you're gonna have a problem. And at that graveside moment, I would have to say for the first time, I had closure about my father's death. And I now realize I'm never gonna see him again. And it's because of that, I can now appreciate when I remember him more. You know, because I don't have any future memories of my father. And um, yeah. Every time I remember him and think about him, I now hold that very dear because it's sometimes some of the things that keep me going because Christian or no, some of his advice is still sound. Some of the things that he taught me are still work. And um, that's something I, I don't ever want to lose. Now, how does this translate now that I am a father who is no longer a believer? a father who raised his kids in the church. Over the years, I watched my sons walk away from the faith. With Edward, it was Edward Jr., my oldest. It was more of a, he went off to college and he began to get exposed to other ideas. And he began to realize, yeah, you know what? I, I don't know that any of what I believe is true and it seems to me that other things are more likely to be true. And so he began to, you know, kind of drift. And I kind of knew that he wasn't being true to the faith a long time ago. My middle son, I don't think he believes either. Um, and I think it's mostly because of his experiences in church. Um, as a pastor's kid, he was always expected to behave. And Justin is my wild boy. And I'm okay with that now. I think we need wild kids. We need kids that push against the status quo. He's not always liked and he's got his flaws and so does my oldest, but they're humans and I can accept them as humans and human beings and I will always love them both. My daughter still believes, 
but it hasn't diminished the fact that I love her very much and uh, she is daddy's girl and she will always be daddy's girl. My loss of faith hasn't changed any of that. It never enhanced it and now losing it doesn't diminish it. I love them to death and I always will. Well, the last seven, eight years now I have been a papa, a grandfather. And I can watch every moment that I see my grandchildren with a lot of joy. From my three granddaughters to my three grandsons, it's just a wonder, you know. Um, their curiosity, I hope that never leaves them or ever gets them kicked out of them. The one thing I wish for them is they can grow up thinking what they want to think and saying what they want to say, you know, not being a jerk about it. I always try to teach them to be polite, but it's more of a, I want them to be free to choose what they want to do. That they're not indoctrinated, that they're not any of that. And I love them all. None of that has changed. What has changed is what I think is important to teach them. But it's still important to teach my children when they ask for me or live my life. And what I think is important to teach my grandchildren when they ask. Because I know someday, some of those grandchildren are going to ask, Papa, why don't you go to church anymore? Now, depending on their age, I may answer them, well, why don't you ask me that in a few more years? Or, oh, let me sit down and tell you a tale. And everybody should know that that's going to come. Everybody. Now, all of this is a deconversion issue for me. Because if it wasn't for the death of my father, I don't think I would have remained a theist as long. But it wasn't his fault or his death's fault so much as what everybody told me. You want to see your dad again? And boy, did I want that more than anything. I wanted one more hug, one more conversation, one more life lesson. Who doesn't? What child that has a great set of parents doesn't want that? And my religion kind of used that to keep me blinded. And now that I face reality, a lot of people say, well, you know, if, if what we say is Christianity is true, I, I, I know it's not true. I know too much to believe in Christianity or in God anymore. I just don't believe. And nobody's given me a convincing argument of why I should believe. And nobody's given me convincing evidence of why I should believe. That's the issue. It's not the emotions anymore. You can't pull up my heartstrings about that because I'd rather be an honest atheist than delude myself into thinking that I'm going to see God and my father and my grandfathers, who I love dearly too, um, whether I'm going to see any of them again. They're gone. And the best I can do to keep their memory alive is to keep what they taught us that is truly beneficial in this world alive, too. Now, I want to thank you for stopping by and listening to a sorrowful father, in some ways, reminisce about his own father, who's gone. And uh, I thank all of you for putting up for me with that. I appreciate it. And I uh, just want to thank you all for every like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate uh, all the things that um, you guys do for the channel because everything you do whenever you interact with this channel it gets noticed and I appreciate that you're free to follow me on Facebook as well it's a great way to get channel announcements when there are some uh, right now there haven't been too many but you know that's kind of the way it works and so you can still get the videos that way too so you'll know when they, they drop and I also have opened up uh, both a PayPal account and a Patreon account uh, both the links are in the description. I also have uh, just recently added uh, two more tiers to the Patreon account. The, uh, they also have very interesting names, but I'm going to make you go check that out for yourself uh, to learn what they are. Uh, and I want to thank you all once again for stopping again, by again, and hopefully I can convince you to be a rabid atheist like myself. In the meantime, this is a rabid atheist, also known as Ed Raby, who misses his father but knows he's gone. Wishing you a good day and a good Father's Day. And goodbye.